Lever Brothers Company, makers of Swan, the soap with the exclusive super-creamed blend, presents... Our friend, Swan. With my friend, Irma. Starring Mary Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgot. Theirs will still be hot. My friend, Irma. Well, this is Sunday morning, and I've got the blues like I never had them before. Why? Because last night we went out on a double date. Irma and Al, Richard and myself. And what is the result? Now, Richard doesn't talk to me. Al doesn't talk to Irma. The fact is, nobody talks. Except Irma. You can't stop her from talking. (laughs) Jane. Yes, honey? I didn't mean to start the fight last night. Well, you had no business insulting Richard that way. When he said his folks came over on the Mayflower, you had no right to turn to Mrs. Rhinelander and ask her how she enjoyed the trip. (laughs) I'm sorry. Well, you started it, but Richard had no right to tell you that your head was the only vacancy in town. (laughs) That's why I'm glad we walked out when we did. I am through with Richard. And I'm through with Al. The way he behaved when the fan dancer came on put water on his face so she'd think he was perspiring, come over and cool him off. (laughs) Honey, I'd rather not recall any of the sordid details. We're through with the boys, and it's probably for the best. That's right, Jane. This is a man's world, but we can go someplace else. You're right, honey. We don't need the boys. We don't need the boys. We can do without them forever. Yes, we can do without them forever. What are you thinking about, Irma? Jane, how can we get the fellows back? (laughs) We don't need them, Irma. There are plenty of things for two girls to do. What? Well, my heavens, we can do things like, uh, well, we can knit, and uh, and we can read, and we can knit, and and we can read, (laughs) and we can knit. (laughs) Gee, Irma, I wonder how we can get the fellows back. I don't know, Jane, but but this should only prove to us that a girl is lost without a fellow. How right you are, honey. I wouldn't want to be found any other way. (laughs) You know, I've got an idea. You know, all men like that domestic touch. Irma, you and I will cook dinner and we'll invite the boys over. You see, they'll they'll just be the four of us in in a warm and friendly atmosphere, and who can tell? What with this being leap year and with a full stomach, a man's liable to say yes to anything. Well, we call the boys, and they're coming over. Now Irma and I are preparing dinner, and Irma is her usual talented self in the kitchen. She has baked an apple pie, and it's perfect, except for one slight error. She forgot to put the apples in it. (laughs) So now she's panicky, so she's cut slits in the crust, and she's trying to slip in the apples with a pair of tweezers. (laughs) Oh, really? Irma? Yes, Jane? Forget the pie, will you, sweetie? It's a total loss. We'll serve the cake I baked. All right, I'll get it off the fire escape. The fire escape? What's my cake doing out there? Well, Al likes icing, so I poured some water on it and set it out to freeze. (laughs) Look, sweetie, I appreciate you trying to help me, but Richard is coming. I'm trying to marry him, not poison him. (laughs) Jane, I want the dinner to be good, too. After all, I want to impress Al. You know, spring is coming, and in the spring, a young man's fancy turns. Yeah? And when it turns, I want it facing me. (laughs) Well, honey, if I let you cook this meal, he won't be able to turn. Rigor mortis will hit him after the first bite. (laughs) Suppose you make the cocktails, huh? Some Manhattans or old fannies? Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little baby carriages. One with a fancy top, one a little buggy. <laughs> Why, Professor? 
Yes, sir. <laughs> Excuse me, a little joke I picked up from a nursemaid. <laughs> <laughs> My, what smells so good? Such a delicate aroma could only come from one thing, Hungarian goulash. It's pot roast. How could I make a mistake like that? Maybe the cow is Hungarian. <laughs> Please, Irma, don't mention cows. Cows remind me of milk. Milk reminds me of butter. Butter reminds me of a tub. And I don't want to discuss Mrs. O'Reilly. <laughs> you know, Professor, there are times when I resent those remarks you make. Frankly, I think you'd get more out of Mrs. O'Reilly if you met her halfway. All right, I'll meet her halfway. I'll hold my arms out and tell her to come to me. Ah, oh, that's the spirit. But only on one condition, if she's on the other side of an open drawbridge. <laughs> now, you see, Professor, that's what I mean. You know, I think it's entirely your fault if you can't get along with her. Jane's right. We had fights with Al and Richard, but we realize we're wrong, so we're giving them a chance to apologize. Please, girls, I thank you for the consideration, but believe me, Mrs. O'Reilly is east and Kropotkin is west, and if I see her coming from the north, believe me, girls, I'm heading south. <laughs> Sir, Please, you... girls, these are my last words. Besides, the smell of food makes me hungry, so I think I'll go back up to my room and open up a can of oyster soup. Oh, Professor, that's out of season. There's no orange soup. <laughs> I'll drink it out of a saucer. There's an orange saucer. Goodbye. <laughs> Isn't it a pity, Jane? Sweet old man like the professor. What kind of a life has he got living alone? He has to go up to a lonely room and eat from a can by himself. Yeah. It is sad, honey. There's nothing as pitiful as a lonely person. And I don't want us to end up that way. That's why we're giving this little dinner party for the boys tonight. Gee, I wonder why the professor hasn't gotten married in all these years. Oh, I don't know. Maybe he hasn't found the right person. Yes, or maybe he can't get his father's permission. <laughs> Irma, hand me the flour sifter. The flour sifter? Yeah, you know, that shiny can with the little holes on the bottom. Oh, that, I threw it out because it leaked. Oh. <laughs> Grand, I'm glad we haven't any screens in this place. You throw them out because they let the air in. <laughs> Come in. Hello, girls. Mind if I drop in for a minute? Oh, not at all, Mrs. O'Reilly. You'll have to excuse us, though. You see, we're just getting dinner ready. Sit down. Thank you. Oh, girls, I get the blues so badly, especially on Sunday. You don't know how lonely an old widow can be. So let me give you a bit of advice. When you get married, always treat your husbands kindly. If you don't, they get even with you. They die, the cowards. <laughs> O'Reilly, you know, you're still, shall we say, young. Well, that's true. But my beauty's all slowly fading. At night, I have to use all sorts of creams and Max Factor's makeup. Have you noticed any difference? I haven't, but the professor says I'm getting to look more like Max every day. <laughs> Girl, believe me, the professor is a miserable, tempered man. Well, Mrs. O'Reilly, you know, I think it's your fault. You won't meet him halfway. And he's even willing to meet you on a drawbridge. Irma. <laughs> you know, Mrs. O'Reilly, you've got to understand that the professor is a very lonely man. He, he's alone in the world, and, and, and I don't want to interfere, but that room of his is, well... Now, Janie, that's not my fault. I try to do my best, the best I can in his room... Why, only yesterday I brought up some white sheets for him. But the man's an ingrate, because now he says he wants a bed. <laughs> well, he's probably tired of sleeping on that studio couch. You know, the professor has a lot of pride. But underneath it all, he's a very sensitive and warm-hearted person. Oh, I guess you're right, Jane. You know, there are times when I think he likes me, because <laughs> he flirts with me. <laughs> Really, Mrs. O'Reilly? How do you know? Oh, a woman always knows these things, Irma. One time when I was on top of the roof, leaning over, fixing the clothesline, he nudged me playfully. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, what's the use of dreaming? I think I'll just go back to my room and throw rocks at my hope chest. <laughs> Goodbye, girls. Oh, 
Gee, Jane, I... I feel sad all over again. Why, honey? Oh, the professor and Mrs. O'Reilly are both so lonely. Wouldn't it be wonderful if tonight at dinner when we get our, our fellows back, we could get them together, too? Then we can kill six birds with one dinner. <laughs> the way you're cooking, honey, you can get eight to one odds anyplace. <laughs> Besides, you know, Irma, they don't get along. I don't think the professor and Mrs. O'Reilly can even sit in the same room without our having to call the police. Come in. Flowers for Jane Stacy. That's me. Oh, uh, here you are, boy. Thanks, lady. Oh, gee. Oh, Irma, they're from Richard. Oh, aren't they beautiful? A and here's a card. Oh, now, isn't this sweet? It says, we'll never quarrel again. I'm looking forward to dinner tonight. Love, Richard. Wasn't that thoughtful of him? Oh, yes. I wonder what Al will bring. Probably some wax paper, so what he can't eat, he can take home. <laughs> Please, Jane, you, you shouldn't pick on Al like that. Someday he's going to be a big man. Honey, he couldn't be a big man if he was wearing stilts. That boyfriend of yours has more angles than a four-way cold tablet. Hello, Jane. Hiya, chicken. Hello, Al, honey. <laughs> Here, chicken. Candy for you. Oh, look, Jane, a box of assorted chocolates. Really? Huh? Let's see. Three peanut bars, <laughs> one old Nick, <laughs> two packages of Lifesavers. Wow, this is quite a present, Diamond Jim. <laughs> Dangerous work. I shook that candy machine till I was blue in the face. <laughs> Oh, Jane, look, here's a card from Al. Oh, Al, I could kiss you for this. Card? What does it say? Love is a path between two hearts from which we have never swerved. So say those words I've longed to hear. Darling, dinner is served. <laughs> oh, gee, Jane, isn't he another Longfellow? Yeah, but Longfellow wrote from suffering. Al writes from hunger. <laughs> Don't talk about Al that way, Jane. Al, uh, did that job come through with Craig Oil? No, chicken, but got him interested in a great deal. It's a derrick with a Ferris wheel attached. So if you don't strike oil, you can open an amusement park. <laughs> oh, Al, that sounds wonderful. You see what hidden talents he has, Jane? Hidden? They should be exiled. <laughs> oh, gee, Jane, isn't it wonderful? Now I've got Al back and you've got Richard back. Oh, but I'm still not happy. Now what's the matter, honey? Oh, I keep thinking of the professor and Mrs. O'Reilly. I can't be happy if I know other people are unhappy. Well, but honey, what can we do about it? Well, I've got a plan. No, no, wait a minute, Irma. No, <laughs> No, Irma. Jane, I'll be right back. Oh. Hey, what do you think Chicken is up to? I don't know, Al, but I'm afraid she's out on a mercy errand. She's probably going to try to get Professor Kropotkin and Mrs. O'Reilly down here together. Oh, she ain't got a chance. You know, although Chicken's got a great heart, I don't think she's got much tact, do you, Jane? Well, I'll put it this way, Al. If Irma had been a diplomat during the Civil War, not only would the North have fought the South, but the East would have slugged it out with the West. <laughs> Al, will, will you keep an eye on the pot roast while I get the phone, huh? Hello? Oh, hello, Richard. Oh, your flowers were just beautiful. Yeah, dinner will be at 7. We're having a pot roast. And if Irma accomplishes what I think she's trying to do, we may have the police for dessert. <laughs> I'll explain it all to you when I see you. Goodbye, Richard. How's the roast, Al? Fine. Never tasted anything better. Oh, Al. All I wanted you to do was just to watch well, it. Well, Gene, I did it. It's all fixed. Irma. They're coming for dinner? Yes, I told Mrs. O'Reilly it was a surprise, and I couldn't tell her who the fellow was. Well, what about the professor? Well, I told him we had a girlfriend for him who was a combination of Rita Hayworth and Lana Turner put together. Chicken, how could you say that? Well, the two of them put together are about as old as Mrs. O'Reilly and weigh about the same. <laughs> Chicken, the professor didn't fall for that, did he? Well, he did when I showed him this picture. Uh, of course, he, he doesn't know who it is. Let me see it. Irma, who is this? It's Mrs. O'Reilly. But this must have been taken when she was 18 years old. Jane, he's getting a woman, not a car. He doesn't have to know what model it is. Oh. 
And now, Susie Swan sings to us. Listen. My advice, says Susie, you like this brand new kind of lather, so be choosy. Swan gives you beauty lather, rich as cream. Your skin stays soft as any dream, and fresh as dew. I swan to you, says Susie. Say, that's what I call real beauty expert advice, Susie Swan. Yes, Swan is a perfect bath soap. Because thanks to Swan's exclusive super creamed blend, Swan gives you a wonderful new kind of beauty lather for your bath. Rich, creamy lather that smooths onto your skin more softly than you ever dreamed possible. And yet, this gentle Swan lather cleanses so thoroughly, your skin fairly glows. And ladies, when you step from the tub, you'll love the way your skin feels. Fresh from top to toe. Because this new kind of Swan beauty lather rinses away so completely. It's true. Swan's exclusive super creamed blend gives you a wonderful new kind of beauty lather. So from now on, make Swan soap your regular bath soap. Well, in her own inimitable way, Irma has done it again. She's got Mrs. O'Reilly thinking that a young Casanova awaits her. And Professor Kropotkin will be down to dinner expecting to meet some glamorous young siren. When they find out the awful truth, the only siren around will be the one that brings the riot squad. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Irma, how could you have done this? Oh, Jane, we wanted to bring the two of them together. Oh, yes, but honestly, honey, the professor's going to walk in here expecting an 18-year-old girl. He will see Mrs. O'Reilly. What will you say to him? Uh, gee, Professor, you're late <laughs> Chicken, nobody was ever that late You know, Irma, there's only one thing to do And that's to tell the truth I'll go upstairs and I'll try and... Oh, girls, excuse my appearance But I'm getting dressed for dinner And I've been so excited at the thought of meeting a new gentleman That I dropped my mirror How does my hair look? I think you've got it on backwards. <laughs> what? Uh, I, I mean, your comb. Uh, look, uh, you know, Mrs. O'Reilly, about this gentleman that you're expecting... Not another word, Jane. I want it to be a surprise. Oh, but you see, Mrs. O'Reilly, Professor Kapat... Please, he... Irma, yeah. don't mention his name when we're speaking of the finer things in life. <laughs> oh, dear, I'd better hurry back to my room. My eyelashes are drying on the windowsill. <laughs> I'm afraid the birds will get at them. <laughs> I'll be back soon. Goodbye, girl. Oh, now, Irma. There, you see how you've misled the poor woman. When she sees it's the professor, her heart will be broken. Not to mention all the furniture. Jane, we've got to prevent them from killing each other. Oh, I don't know why you're both so worried. It'll be a candlelight dinner, and when they come in, we'll blow out all the candles. <laughs> all right. Every man for himself. Come in. Hello, everybody. Oh, it's you, Richard. Gee, I'm afraid you're not in for a very peaceful meal. What do you mean? Well, you see, I, I originally planned this dinner as a sort of a bury the hatchet thing. But it seems that Irma's played Cupid and invited Mrs. O'Reilly and Professor Kropotkin without either of them knowing the other is coming. So instead of it being a bury the hatchet party, it'll just be a scalping party. <laughs> well, now, Jane, I wouldn't be so distressed. You know, I, I once read an article by an eminent psychologist who states that the reason so many couples fear romance and marriage is because they see so many unhappy couples around them. Yeah? What, what you mean is that, that if, the, if the four of us pretend to be very happy, the, the professor and Mrs. O'Reilly will forget their hatred and try to copy us, Exactly. Huh? But we must put it on extra heavy, Jane. No quarreling of any sort. We must be the epitome of happiness. Uh, you understand, Irma? Certainly, I'll show them we're happy. Uh, Al, when they knock at the door, I'll sit on your lap. No, chicken, I'll sit on your lap. <laughs> I don't care if you sit on each other's laps, but remember now, no quarreling, and that goes for all of us. Now remember, shh, Irma, be happy, happy. Come in. Well, here I am, dressed to kill. <laughs> Quiet, Irma. <laughs> oh, yes. Ha, 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 ha. Did I say something funny? No, it's just that we're all so happy. 
<laughs> well, uh, this young lady I'm going to meet, Janie, what's she like? Uh, uh well, I, I, I must say her, her pictures do flatter her a little. <laughs> yes, about 40 years. <laughs> Irma, uh, uh, Professor, uh, that's a, a nice suit you've got on. Is it salt and pepper or herringbone? Who knows, when you work in a restaurant, you pick up everything. <laughs> I'm so excited, I'm shaking like a schoolboy. Here comes the truant officer. <laughs> Come in. Hello, everybody. Oh, Mrs. O'Reilly, how lovely you look. Ha, 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 ha. not yet. <laughs> Professor, what are you doing here? Oh, what's the difference? <laughs> uh, Richard, my sweet, it's nice to see your smiling face before me. Happy, dear? I do nothing but smile when I'm with you, beloved. Right, Al? Oh, indeed. I, I have never known such happiness since I met Chicken. Every time I look at her, I laugh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, shall we all have dinner? Oh, yes. Just as soon as the young lady... Hold it. Hold it. What's the matter? I'm getting a little sick. <laughs> Richard is for Jane. Al is for Irma, and me, I'm for the nearest open window. Now, now, wait, Professor, wait. What is there to wait about? Irma. What, Professor? That picture of that girl you showed me. But that was Mrs. O'Reilly taken 40 years ago. I don't believe it. That much damage couldn't have been done in only 40 years. <laughs> now, just a minute there, Professor. You think you're disappointed. What about me? I expected someone handsome and dashing. The only time you ever dashed was when you saw me coming for the rent. <laughs> now listen to me, Mrs. You O'Reilly. You listen to me, Professor. Now, 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 look, the two of you. Now, now, look, maybe we did trick you into this meeting, but, but why not be grown up about it? You're both just wonderful people, and, and you're lonely. Gee, I think you ought to give each other a chance. Come on, now, why don't you join us at dinner? And you, you can see for yourself how happy Al is with Irma and I am with Richard. Come on, now, what do you say? Pot roast smells pretty good, folks. Well, uh, I'm willing. Well, I'll stay. Only on the condition that I sit next to Mrs. O'Reilly. Why, Professor? <laughs> if I sit next to her, I won't have to face her. <laughs> well, come on now, everybody. Dinner is served. Well, here we are, just finishing dinner And I must say, things have been progressing rather nicely so far Not one harsh word has passed between Mrs. O'Reilly and the professor Maybe it's because neither of them stopped eating since they sat down But now we're in trouble they finished eating And before they get a chance to start tearing into each other I've nudged Richard and whispered to him to tell a funny story <laughs> You know, uh, as long as we're all sitting here sort of friendly, I'd sort of like to tell a little story. Uh, it's sort of risque. Oh, don't tell a story in risque. Tell it in plain English so we can all understand it. <laughs> Mama, why do you always butt in when Richard wants to talk? Go ahead, Richard. Chicken, are you going to let Jane talk to you like that? <laughs> well, as I was saying... <laughs> Irma, will you please be quiet, please? We'd like to hear what Richard has to say. Well, as I was saying... Why does this... Richard have to talk? Maybe, maybe my Al has a funny story. Thank Thank you, Chicken. Now, Irma, this fellow Richard was... Richard has started. Let him finish. Thank you, Jane. Well, now, it Wait seems... Wait a that... minute. <laughs> What's wrong with my stories? I know funnier ones than he does. Yes. <laughs> That's a good one, Al. I haven't told it yet. <laughs> Irma Peterson, now, this is your last warning. You keep still or Now, I just don't... a minute, Jane. Nobody talks to Irma like that when I'm around. You get smart with her and I'll... Now, wait a minute, Al. Don't talk to Jane that way. Stay out of this, Richard. I can handle it myself. Jane, I wish you'd stop telling everybody what to do. That's telling her, chicken. She's always picking on you. No, she's not. <laughs> well, if she does pick on you, Irma, I think it's for your own good. Richard, Rhinelander, I'm perfectly capable of handling my own arguments. This is a personal affair. Please stay out of it. All right, Jane, if that's the way you feel about it, goodbye. <laughs> Probably heard the story anyway. <laughs> oh, that Richard's a sorehead. Well, that's no way to talk about Richard after all You're not his girlfriend Oh, keep quiet, Irma Jane, you can't talk to my girl that way Al, mind your own business Okay, I will Goodbye 
<laughs> Jane, this is all your fault. You made Al leave. I made him leave. Irma, sometimes I think you're the most ridiculous girl in the world. Goodbye. She's got no right saying I'm the most ridiculous girl in the world. She hasn't traveled enough to know. <laughs> and I'm going to tell her that. Mrs. O'Reilly. <laughs> yes, Professor? It has been a long time since I've had the privilege of escorting a beautiful woman to a dance. Are you ready? Oh, Professor! <laughs> Folks, we'll announce more top winners of the $100,000 Lever Fur Contest in just a moment. But first, here's a special word to all the ladies listening. If you'd like to make your bath a real pleasure and a real beauty bath at the same time, then the soap to keep handy is Swan Soap. Sure, because Swan's exclusive super cream blend gives you a wonderful new kind of beauty lather that feels soft and gentle against your skin. Luscious Swan Beauty Lather that cleanses so thoroughly, then rinses away so completely... Your skin is left feeling beautifully smooth and fresh when you step from the tub. Yes, from now on, make your bath a real beauty bath with Swan Soap's wonderful super-creamed beauty lather. And now, here are the top winners of the third week in the Lever Fur Contest. First prize, a gorgeous $3,000 mink coat or the cash goes to Mrs. Janice T. Urselcook, 907 State Street, Lafayette, Indiana. Congratulations, Mrs. Urselcook. The second prize winners who each win a beautiful $1,000 fur coat or the cash are Mrs. Robert S. Oakes, Alexandria, Virginia, Mrs. Gladys Dorothy Johnson, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and Joan L. Smith, Chicago, Illinois. Congratulations to you all. The other 325 winners in the third week's contest will be notified by mail. Well, we're all friends again, thanks to Mrs. O'Reilly and Professor Kropotkin, who gave a dinner for all of us tonight. So before we went, I said to Irma, now remember, honey, let's not have any quarrels with anyone tonight. Just agree with everything the fellas say. And Irma took me literally. In fact, Richard said he thought if he took another bite, he'd choke to death. And Irma said, oh, if that'll make you happy, I'm in favor of it. <laughs> <laughs> me, Jane Stacy, I don't know if I'm happy or not, but I'm in favor of my friend Irma. <laughs> My Friend Irma, presented by Swan, another fine product of Lieber Brothers Company, was produced and directed by Cy Howard. Tonight's script was written by Cy Howard and Park Levy, and stars Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. The part of Professor Kropotkin was played by Hans Conried. Mrs. O'Reilly was played by Gloria Gordon. Ladies, listen. The shortage of fats and oils is still very serious, and it's worldwide. So please keep on saving every drop of used kitchen fat. Your butcher will pay you for every pound. Frank Bingman speaking. Spry. Cakes are light and high. Spry. There's a reason why. Spry. Cakes improve with Spry. Rely on Spry. Yes, there's a reason why Spry is the cake making wonders. Spry has an amazing cake improver secret. Try the Spry one bowl way and be certain of lighter, finer, richer cakes every time. No other type of shortening has Spry's cake improver. For new cake making success, rely on Spry. The pure, all-vegetable shortening. Rely on Spry. S-P-R-Y. Rely on Spry. S-P-R-Y. Tune in next week one hour earlier and listen to the Lux Radio Theater, immediately followed by my friend Irma. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.